Hello and welcome. I'm JC Proton and this is episode 31 of the third Let's Play series. We're playing a custom Horatio faction, a meritocracy federation, and uh, we are currently at war. And we've got some battles to do this term. We're at war with the Vaulters and the Cravers. Um, we're at turn 151. Uh, the plan for this uh, episode is going to be to invade Pleon. Uh, we have sieged it down close enough. We should be able to uh, conquer it. We have nicely upgraded troops. Um, and then uh, next, then we'll click over to the next turn. And um, so I guess the end of this turn, after we hopefully um, conquer this, we'll move our siege fleets over here to Heezy. Um, in the next turn, we'll see where we're at on the next invasion over here. And we will come over here to the um, Vaulters. Uh, we'll do an invasion here next turn. And also Lacerta next turn. Uh, and then move those in, um, invader type siege ships over here to Mintaka. And start sieging that down. Um, and I, I think that's that's basically about all I'm planning on doing on this episode. Uh, trade routes, we still just have the two external trade routes with Lumeris. Um, we have our three trade headquarters here, here, and here. And we have our trade subsidiaries here, here, uh, here, here, and here. Yeah, I guess it's over here. And uh, yeah, those those five. <sighs> That's that's about it, man. Um, quick, just a quick recap. Uh, we're only at war with these two. We're at peace with everybody else. Um, uh, the Vaulters just at war with us. Uh, Cravers are at war with everybody. <laughs> we're cool with this alliance. Uh, you know, the alliance is only at war with the Cravers, and the uh, United Empire is also at war with the Cravers. So that's that's where, where the galaxy, how it's laid out here, man. Um, so let's just get into it. Let's go ahead and hit Pleon. So we've sieged it down. We've got a lot of siege fleet, as you can see, sieging it down, 550. Um, that will work. Let's go for it. Oh yeah, they don't have a sliver of a chance, right? Um, so we could do preemptive bombing, do a lot more damage, uh, to the ground structures. Uh, we could go this and get us no damage to the structures. And, uh, or we could blitz and go with even more troops but it's not necessary to go that heavy so we're going to go gorilla try to minimize the amount of damage but honestly with this big of a landing force <clears throat> it's going to be ugly there's going to be a lot of damage so it is what it is man here we go Okay, so we got that no problem. There are five Craver populations there. Great. And no structures. Okay, we'll take it. We will take it. Okay. Some structures were destroyed. Three populations got crushed. Murderized. Cool. Titanium is always welcome. We 
need that. We run, we're running short on that. That we're only making twenty nine a turn, and over here we got forty eight, right? So we definitely are running a lot, a lot less titanium production than uh, than I would like. Okay, so let's roll up here. Fight. You want to throw down? Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. Yeah, you're going to run. 100%. Hundo percento. You're going to run, bro. But I'm, I'm just going to do uh, full reserves. I know you're going to retreat. Going full reserves in case I need to attack something else. That saves an action point. So I can still attack again. Action point being this thing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. These guys are probably going to take him out because they're at war with him too. Um, okay, cool. So we got some a little bit of siege happening. Let's move these invaders over. 19 invasion ships. The invasion ships look like this. Uh, where are they here edit you got one engine one C, uh one invasion module and then um, three siege modules which each do seven so you do like 21 22 23 points of siege damage I guess four of these is a 96 siege damage something like that almost a hundred so anyway that's my uh, siege ship um, so right now, there's Siege at 60. Let's move in the invaders. So we're going from 60 Siege damage per turn to... Five hundred. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and move these up here. And we've got this fleet here as basically just the backstop at Pleon. That is a pretty good defensive garrison, 14,000 attack power. So let's go ahead and add this guy. Oh, I can't add him to that fleet. Okay. That's cool. Uh, we can just leave that the way that is. Everybody's moved. What's left? Invaders will stay. That dude can stay. Okay, cool. Let's look how the. Okay, never mind. There's nothing there. Okay, and Pleo, we need to do something in the build queue here. Okay, so we'll get a few things going. Get it going, and uh, we'll throw a few things here. That, 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 that. That's enough for now. Uh, I'll do the rest of it off camera. <clears throat> I normally um, will just put a huge build queue in uh, my systems. Uh, just I'll, I'll just basically queue up everything that I'm going to build in roughly the order that I want to build it and That way I just do it right at the beginning and then I don't have to think about it You know and if something comes up where I want to change something or add something I can do it on the fly But it's already laid in there, so I don't have to think about it um, And I can just focus on you know playing the game doing moving my fleets and whatever um, Okay, so that was all I really needed to do that turn uh, we'll go ahead and advance and then we'll do the fleet movement and invasions and stuff like that and then boom We'll we'll call it quits on the recording at that point and then I'll do other stuff off-camera You know updating build queues shuffling population around 
we're working on our next splice, which is going to be the Sheridan. Um, uh, you can tell I have done a lot of improvements to the Horatios, and at this point, you know, we have spliced a lot of, of, of raises. I think it's, it's 15, 16, 17, 18, something like that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and rock and roll through the next turn. Get this, get this going. In the last, uh, in the last um, episode, uh, I believe it was the last episode, we crushed the Horatio's capital ships. They, um, they had a, uh, mm, what do you call it? A carrier, the large size ship that's six command points. Uh, had six bomber squadrons on it. Energy bombers just wiped it out. Those bombers were pretty worthless. Yeah, at this point, the turns are kind of long. As far as, like, when you click next turn, there's a lot of stuff happening in the background that the computer's got to grind through. Okay, there we go. Let's move all fleets. Clicky, clicky. There we go. All right, we can invade there. We can invade over here at Arcturus. We're having a good time of it. Let's go. Let's see if we can do an invasion down here at Hezy. -E. Yeah, he's only got a hundred left. That ought to be enough. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ships are still moving around. Getting settled in. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. We unlocked a new slot in the battle tactics. That's cool. Adaptive fleet systems. Ooh, more command points. Cool. That's nice. We, we, we built things in our queue here. We built a few things. Did some terraforming. So at this point, uh, colonization-wise, we're at 44 colonies. Uh, we're capable of 52. We have multiple battleships in queue uh, getting ready to come out of the hangars next turn, next few turns. Uh, building a level four system upgrade there. I've uh, got a few autonomous administrations wrapping up. So that'll be another three or four systems uh, increase to the colony cap. So I've got room for about another dozen systems roughly that I can take uh, Score-wise, we are at this, 5,300. So we're roughly triple uh, anybody else on the map. Over triple, actually, at this point. Um, and yeah, he, 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 wants, he wants to be allies, but I'm not really feeling it, man. I mean, I'm, I just, I, they'll just raise the stakes for victory, right? Victory conditions where we're at <laughs> okay so at this point um i i haven't built any obelisk of all space time uh high score is 600 because we're doing endless duration game um economy i'm at uh just over a quarter million points of dust uh so far and i need seven million to win so very far away on that one and i think science is the one i'm closest to um that looks like uh right now we have one two three four okay four of the 12 tier five that we need so we need eight more tier five and then all four of these i guess you call them tier six whatever um to, to, to win so I'm closest to that um, 
I'm producing 61,000 per turn. These things are costing it's like two and a half turns a piece times eight is 20 turns. And then these things are, uh, what does that cost? 433, six times seven is 42. So say seven times four is 28, say maybe 30. So we're like 50 turns away roughly um, for a science victory. So around maybe 200, turn 200 or so if we go science. <coughs> uh, economic victory, way longer than that. Um, so yeah, probably a science victory or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do obelisks of all space time. I don't know that I have enough titanium to pull that off because um, those are like super expensive so I don't know maybe maybe, maybe I could pull it off we'll, we'll see um, 40,000 industry five thousand that's eight turns and then the next one's probably 50% more than that. So 12 turns, that's, that's 20 turns away. So maybe 20 turns at least for obelisk uh, space-time victory versus 50 for science. So, you know, maybe, maybe. Anyway, let's get back to it, man. Uh, let's, let's do this battle here. Let's get in on them. Let's go with this guy. Let's invade. Boom. He's got nine populations there, man. Let's, uh, 100. Yeah, we should be able to really overpower him. So we'll go gently. Decisive victory. Yay. All right, man. That's what I like to see. There's five populations still remaining. We will occupy it. There's one improvement. All right. easy and then let's go over here come on computer don't lag out on me it lags like that it makes me nervous maybe I'll could poss possibly lose the recording hopefully not hopefully not okay this is this dude is inside my influence all right let's do this let's see he has how much 29 defending yeah He'll probably draft. Let's go ahead and do this. Kaboom. And we will go Gorilla. Should completely overpower him. We still got plenty. Yeah, should be great. That's right, this was um, <coughs> the minor. Uh, yeah, these were Eider populations here. That's right. Yeah, he snaked, he snaked this one away from me. I remember that. Four population left. There's Eider left. Yep, and some Vaulters. Cool, we'll occupy. Oh, 
Cool. That's an expensive one to lose. <laughs> cool, only lost one population death, though. <clears throat> That's good. Cool. All right. Let's go over here. Oh, what do we have going on here, boys? Let's be friendly now. Let's be friendly. All right. Yep, yep, that'll work. Let's see, they have 27 left to defend. <clears throat> and we should be fine to go gorilla. His aircraft flew like 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 flew away and like never came back. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here, man. Calgaros, Bagaba, some vaulters. Okay, cool. Cool, that's great. All right, let's move these uh, invaders up here. All right, you guys go trucking up here. Do the thing you do. So we're going from 171 siege damage up to 378. So we'll be done, we'll be ready for that one in two turns. Yeah, Mintaka is next, man. Mintaka is next. So then we'll figure out. We're gonna, I'll, I'll figure out off camera like what I'm gonna do with like Perseus. Um, am, I, am I gonna colonize here? How how much pressure do I want to put over here? Do I want to make them that alliance mad at me? You know, the alliance of four here. Um, still kind of surprised that the. Um, Unfallen joined the alliance, but you know, it is what it is. It's fine. I didn't. I don't really want to join any alliances because the, the the more you ally, um, the more it drives up your victory condition costs. Um, these numbers go up. These numbers go up of like if you're going to build additional wonders and and the, the the number of science goes up. So you end up having to basically complete the uh, the amount that it would be to win if you were solo and then while you're in the alliance and then you just leave the alliance and then you instantly win it's it's cheesy it's a cheesy way of doing it but that's kind of how it goes i guess um so my plan going forward here uh longish term is um seems like things are going well here with the cravers i'm probably just gonna roll through the cravers and just mop them up and just like make all their systems into my systems right um gonna eventually get enough sheridan uh that i'll splice them uh i'm gonna get enough cravers i'm gonna splice them that should be pretty cool um get a big boost from that vaulters i'll splice them either um, you know, I'll multiply them. Maybe I'll be able to splice them before the end of the game, get a little more dust flowing. Um, yeah. Um, so the, the United Empires have been cool. They've been unusually cool. Normally they're not this cool with me, right? Um, they've been really cool with me this game. So I'm kind of inclined to not, you know, turn on them, betray them, whatever. Um, I might not invade them. 
uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where I'm at uh, once I've mopped up the Cravers. Uh, you know, if I'm bored and I've got a ways to go, then, yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and crash uh, United Empire. And then yeah, we'll, we'll see how full my hands are. You know, maybe, maybe I'm going to end up at war with the Alliance, right? You know, if that happens, then things will be kind of spicy. Because <laughs> altogether, those guys are pretty strong, right? Looking at the scores here. Uh, you know, you add up, uh, Sophon's, uh, 1334, uh, Riftborn, 1515, Lumera, 1767, and then the Unfallen at 690, so you're talking 700, that's 2,003, it's over 5,000, right? So it's basically, I guess, all four of those empires combined, theoretically, score-wise, they're kind of pretty close to being on par with me. Um, although I kind of I kind of don't think that's really the case because I don't think that, that they can handle these battleships. And I can keep cranking these bad boys out. So we'll see. We'll see. But... Um, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, got, got dudes leveling up and stuff, so... Cranking out populations, shuffling those around. Um, you know, eventually we're going to go ahead and get... Right now we're building uh, super light aerodynamics. I guess give a couple more movement speed. Then we're going to be raising the uh, uh, max populations. Going to uh, be... Um, correcting, uh, whatever they call it, reducing planetary negative anomalies. And I've got something here from splicing, uh, not splicing, from uh, assimilating the uh, sowers where it's plus two fidzy on planets with reduced anomalies. So I, I do really want to pick up the reduced anomalies. Um, ability here and uh that also stacks really big with these uh dust bonanza and pocket laboratory and school of geniuses abilities so um very very cool um so my plan is uh we're gonna knock out these techs um knock out one of these ones over here that boosts industry and then that'll get me uh the three and the three that i need to get this one so I'm going to do this, uh, Genius of the Endless, um, minus 20% tech cost and plus 10% science on all systems. So that should speed up my research. And then uh, after that, um, kind of thinking might be good to pick up these. Uh, makes my troops better, more health and more damage. Um, and picking up this uh, gives me the three over here. So then I'll probably pick up a couple over here. Um, an upgraded invasion module and um, more troop health and damage. Uh, and then that would give me these three, which then I'll probably pick up Wealth of the Endless. So more fizzy and reduced... Uh, dust inflation is always good and increased uh, system trade value so then that I have these three and all I'd be lacking is the three over here I'll pick up uh, chlorophyll chemistry and get the um, super biofuel factory and then I don't know what the other one is going to be over here none of them are really great but the you know, uh, I'll, I'll get something that's the top tier here, and then I'll, I'll get the, the this final one here, Power of the Endless, and then that'll be a science victory. So that's that's my current plan, and we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, maybe it'll turn out to be faster to to go with building uh, obelisks of all space time, but. I kind of doubt it because I would need to build a bunch of them. It's five? <laughs> five of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs>
<coughs> yeah, so I'm thinking science victory. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, that's that's where we're at. And um, so we'll see you back in the, in the next video. Uh, until then, I uh, hope life is good for you, man. Stay safe out there. And uh, thanks for watching. If you are so inclined, uh, please like, subscribe, comment, make suggestions. Um, my plan is to do all of the victory conditions. So uh, my previous two games, um, the last two series, I did a conquest victory and a supremacy victory. Um, if we get science victory, then on the next game, uh, all three of these will be disabled. And we'll just keep doing that until we've done all of the victory conditions. Um, you can disable the score victory. Uh, and there is a seventh victory condition, I believe, um, that is basically last man standing. If you wipe out every other civilization on the map and you're the only one left, I think that's also a victory condition, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I've never done it, but it would be fun to try. Um, so anyway, uh, until next time, uh, have a good one. Thanks for watching.